Hello and welcome to another episode of the Magic Arena Run. Today we're gonna continue our foray into some of the stock decks that um, the game gives you right after the tutorial. We finished with black. That one was okay. We finished with red. That one was okay, but we did have to kind of gut it a bit. And now we're gonna be taking a look at the green deck, Forest Smite. This is actually one of the first few decks I made a monocolor deck with um, some of the... Le some of the stuff I got from draft and from all the packs. So it's actually one of the few decks I'm kind of familiar with. But let's take a look at how it is. So first things up. Um, as we're going to note that um, the deck is trying to do two things at once. It's trying to take advantage of the fact that green has very efficient creatures. Both at lower cost and higher cost. The problem we're going to experience however is that it's kind of not doing one thing very well it's some tra it's doing two things but, but at mixed rate so let's take take a look at the two t one two, two things it's doing one of the things it's doing is ramp so we have two copies of Lanor elves two copies of druid of the cow these guys add mana let's see for the people to do that two copies of elvish rejuvenator also at adds mana this one is actually a lot better in a constructed deck um, especially a monocolored one since you just wanted to dig for land and you and the odds of um, whiffing is wh whiffing out of five cards maybe not so much then so we have that we have a few decent um early game creatures greenwood sentinel two two for two vigilance not bad for common highland game gives you some life when it dies and let's see centaur courser three three for three actually quite reasonably fine the, and bristling boar um, four tree m importantly cannot be blocked by more than one creature so maybe not so relevant and constructed where you'll eventually run into a much bigger creature but at least it's not going to be chumped out of nowhere now we're going to get over to the upper end where we have creatures that are v quite efficient even for their cost so we have a uh, vigilant bay lot which has vigilance five 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 four five mana so here it's basically efficiency of power and toughness to cost and we have the excessive gigantosaurus which is 10 10 for five green mana but this one gets chumped very easily so probably some, yeah, need to look for ways around it we have an aggressive mammoth eight eight four eight eight four six and other creatures you control have trample I believe this card is not original to core 2019 actually I could take a look at it for a while give me a sec okay so I'm gonna do a quick check I think this might be a welcome deck card yeah this is a, this cards from the welcome deck so it is so it's not an M Magic the Gathering, you know, not an not an arena exclusive, but um, actually it's quite interesting. It reminds me of um, reminds me of the Worm from Scars of Mirrodin, five mana, five five, has back then it was called Intimidate, where your creatures could only be blocked by creatures that had the same color as it or were artifact creatures, and all your other creatures had Intimidate also. So just, you know, all your other green creatures had Intimidate. That's okay. Um, there is a and there's also a big daddy Galta, um, twelve mana for twelve twelve, but has a way to reduce its casting cost. There are it does have a bit of a sub team of um, it has some copies of Plummet for anti flying removal, has some copies of Rabbit Bite. This one's actually quite good for its cost. It's not a it's not a straight fight card. Has some Titanic Grow to pump its way through. A single Verdant re Rebirth for card draw. This one's kind of feels like out. It's a bit out of place. Blanchwood armor to make your creatures even bigger. Not too happy with this one because um, basically it's you're painting a target on one of your smaller creatures, and removal is much better now. So we have to keep that in mind. Speaking of that, that also goes with this card, Prodigious Growth. Seven seven for six. Pro decent rate also a trample but you are asking to get blown out unless you can catch your opponent tapped out there's always going to be one meter golem on all these decks I guess it's a concession for decks that are more finely tuned and we have the standard 25 um, 
forests. So we're going to throw this into the meat grinder quite throw this in the meat grinder immediately. I guess this is some this is decent enough in the, than the previous red deck, so I don't have to tweak this right off the bat. So let's take the forest smite deck and give it a shot. Let's see how well we let's see how well or how poorly we go with this one. Also, my level has been dropping quite a bit in Constructed, so it might give this deck a better fair shake, I suppose. Well, at least I'm at least I'm not too concerned about my level or ranking. So far, there's no, the game hasn't been offering any rewards. Like, oh, if you reach this ranking at the end, um, they'll unlock they'll unlock this some um, bonus. So. Looking at this one, this is actually a very bad hand to keep. No action on two unless our opponent plays a flyer. No, we're not going to ever use this one because our only creature's at four. We might draw into it, but that's asking too much. Let's just mulligan. This one's even more painful. We get the scry one, I suppose. So this is one of the problems when your deck does... Two two things and both of them are on opposite ends. You you end up with cases where your your mulligans are very awkward. I'm gonna mulligan one more time. Okay, I'm kind of forced to keep this now. But at least if we do hit turn five, it's more promising than the five five vigilance guy. Yeah. Okay, that's actually acceptable. We do have a play in turn two. But I'm not too happy with this one. We basically need to draw two more forests to even get Gigantosaurus. I would be happy with just drawing more action. And opponent's also playing a green deck. It is the better one. I'm gonna play the Druid of the Cull first because we do need to be able to block somewhat. So... If you're going for the Elves team, as our opponent is doing, this is the way to go. Um, yeah, sure. Just block. So I'm gonna cast Land or else because we have to. We do have two mana floating, so I can block and pump, so we'll just end the turn there. And if there's one nice thing about it is we're not exactly targeting our opponent's creatures. The one thing that concerns me is that So I'm gonna start with blocks. This is an instant. We might get slightly blown out, but we might not have a choice. The safer place to just use Lanoir Elves to block. Actually, yeah, that's a probably good point. Let's block with Lanoir Elves. Then Titanic Growth. I probably should block the other creature also. So, yeah, not too bad. So, we're still at 4 mana, so we're a bit shy here, but we can... Okay, so we can hit with Elvish Rejuvenator. Hit. Yeah, all our lands were here. Uh, no big loss losing these guys, so let's take a land. So... I can... S I'm gonna just attack with it with Druid. So that I don't get tempted to block and wait for our opponent to have the trick of his own. Wait, is this... Okay, so at least this one's not blocking yet. Going to take the two damage. The sad thing is. Okay. So I probably should cast Gigantosaurus first. Then I'll be using Rabbit Bite to take care of Torn Lieutenant and whatnot. So. Our opponent is about to get his own big creature. So we're going we have to play around that one. We're probably gonna take five from Ronas when he does that. Steel Leaf Champion, there it goes. So we're gonna take. Five. We'll block Torn Lieutenant for sure. Next turn, we're just gonna Rabbit Bite. Swing with some of our creatures. Oh, he's holding back. So what I can do is actually just Rabbit Bite now. So this turns off Ronas. Does he have a pump effect? Blossoming 
blossoming defenses yeah that's kind of the one thing i would I was expecting so where so he can block with this one so that's going to be a problem we can blanch with armors will blanch with armor the elvish rejuvenator so we have a secondary blocker for steel leaf champion yes we're kind of wasting two cards on it but we don't have much of a choice we're actually falling behind since we can't we could not kill steel leaf and we now have to be able we could answer galta with titanic growth so as you can see stock deck yeah we're gonna t we're gonna have to take the five this guy no blocks he's probably gonna just pump well he might cast something he could just pump something else. Okay, Nanwar Elf, so he's not going to pump anything. Okay, so the Plummet's a dead card. This definitely is a sideboard card. So I'm going to... Hmm. Let's see. I could go into combat with Gigantosaurus, but that doesn't do much. Because it doesn't have Trample. It's just going to eat an Elves. He could basically just keep swinging it, Ronas. I need to I need him to swing so I'm gonna play chicken so if you're going for a mono green deck you definitely want this guy shame that he's gonna rotate out soon so he, we probably need to look for other alternatives so he's gonna pump Galta so let that resolve so 15 yeah 14's not gonna do it we'll see how he attacks We'll block. We'll block with both the Rejuvenator and Gigantosaurus. Then we'll see how he orders it. He's ordering Gigantosaurus first, so... It doesn't really matter which I pump, but at least I do... But I do save one guy. Oh! Oh yeah wonky animation so at the so this guy can fight now but no he can still block the steel leaf champion yeah being unable to kill steel leaf champion was an annoying factor so can't attack yet so we're gonna so unless we can find a way to answer steel leaf champion we're gonna we're going we're going to lose this game to just Rona's hits for defenses okay first we have to make the obvious block he can it takes six to pump so if he wants to kill druid of the cow so be it we'll just take five he can just pump this one so we're actually trading so, so four three so he can't save Steel Leaf. I will take 6 damage. Oh wait. Oh, he has the mana. So, let's see. 5, 6. So there's some trades. So at least this shuts him off for a bit. Until he pumps another creature, in which case he attacks again. So, yeah, this is not going to do it. Yep, that's me. Yep, so that's my concession. Lately I've been a bit salty, so I might be not so I might not be too friendly with the concessions, but this one's a this one's a relatively fair deck. I'm actually curious what the black is for. I haven't seen a single black card come out. I could have saved it, but frankly with a dead card stranded here, not 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 gonna do it. Yeah, there really needs to be more transparency in the, how your rank is going. So, first loss, well... At least it was an interesting deck. That is one direction we could take the green deck if we go... if When we start going onto construction. There are plenty... There are some decent elves in Core 2019. It's a shame that um, we're gonna lose... Well, not exactly. Some of the el elves from... Kaladesh were reprinted in Core 2019. 
And we do have some DLs from Dominaria, so those are kind of options, I guess. But we lose out on some of the good ones like Rishkar and whatnot. So we do have two drops. We just need one more land, maybe another land running. So we'll keep this one. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wrong click, wrong click. My bad, my bad. Don't be offended. Okay, so at least we drew at least we drew our third mana. So we're gonna try to slip a centaur courser through. Burrows not gonna be missed. Okay, Highland game. Actually, it's interesting. I can swing with Greenwood Sentinel. Okay, he didn't. He didn't bite. I was gonna use rabbit bite. That's. I'm walking into an obvious counter spell, but. Hey, wait. So let's. Or not. Hmm. So this is actually. So this is actually interesting. He's gonna cast something also. Oh, Dovin Ban. Okay, so you know he's tapped out. I will find your weakness. So he's gonna he'll negate one of our creatures. We'll just swing with the other Incident. guy. It's a shame Dovin Ban never got the light of day he so desperately wanted. Okay, so not quite our third land, so gonna attack not No, let's reconfigure that. There, one attacker. Let's see if he blocks. If he blocks, it's just rabbit bite. Simple as that. No blocks. Centaur courser. Now I can rab rabbit bite anything. The only downside is I'm running into a potential fumigate. That's one of the issues with. Um, what is this? One of the issues with running a lot of small creatures. Though if he's activating that ability, maybe he doesn't have it. Settle the wreckage might be an issue. Let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2 mana shy. 1 mana shy. So, let's do the same thing all over again. So, he did buy a lot of time for himself, so. I guess I could. S no, let's just get rid of Dovin Ban now. Let's see, he could settle the wreckage, in which case. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, some blocks. So, going to cast Rabbit Bite. I'm gonna use it on the one that's already di it took damage, taken damage. Uh, Highland gain. Let's see. You know what? Let's not commit. There's a temptation to run out everything, but. Against a color that can sweep your board multiple ways, probably not a great idea. This could actually just be a, an approach deck that's missing some of the elements, but... Okay, there's the Fumigate that I kind of predicted. So, there you go. Let's run out Vigilant Baylot. This guy's gonna probably eat the castaway though. So our opponents now hit 7 mana. It's, if he does cast approach from the second sun, we're in for the race. Ooh. Exclusive Archangel. Okay. So combat. So we're kind of racing. So I... That's actually an interesting run. So let's see. 6 mana, 5 so it's 11. I'm gonna drop Highland game. That's enough to that's enough to cast Galta. We know he has Fumigate, so I'm not going to tr I'm gonna try to avoid running into it, but it's a bit scary. He does have his own exquisite archangel, but he might just fumigate it out in response to Galta. There's also the issue that if he does something like cast 
Okay, so I am not casting Galta anytime soon. So this is actually like a white blue angels deck, which is actually quite possible. I wonder how it will change when the let's see. Probably should No, if I plummet this, he just gets it back. So let's not rush into that for the time being. Okay, essence scatter. We'll let that dissolve. So five, six, seven, eight. If I yeah, if I plummet this one, he just embalms it back again. So yeah, we'll just end the turn here. This might be a mistake, but yeah, we're definitely not gonna try to get the vigilant bay lot back. So we're gonna take that out because at least that one's that one hits harder. We're still gonna lose in four turns unless we can do do something with our Highland game. I guess we, I guess we could just send it to die. Well, there's an aggressive mammoth. Probably gonna get countered. So let's attack first. Maybe he. So we can kind of race, but not so efficiently. If he sw swings for a tree, I can swing back. His best bet is to hold this guy back so that um, so so that he can just trade up. So what I could do is, hmm, actually I actually could just cast Galta now. Let's see what this last card is. Then let's. Then we'll swing with the aggressive mammoth. I'm only swinging with one because I know. Because I, it doesn't matter if I hit him down to six or not. Another, another hit should do it. Of course. Well, actually, it's not too bad if he casts fumigate. No, it's actually. Because let's see, fumigate's five mana. It takes six mana to embalm this guy, so he's one mana shy of being able to do both. Rivers Rebuke. Well, I I did foresee he might have that. So we're gonna have to do this all over again. Another planet would be nice though. Okay, center courser. So let's manage our mana efficiently. We only have seven, so I can don't want to cast aggressive mammoth. Let's cast the Highland game first. He's probably gonna let he'll probably let it slide. Even if he has a counter, he knows I have bigger stuff. We'll cast Centaur Courser. He might not let this guy slide. Okay, he did. So he could keep swinging for defenses, I suppose. Yeah, I missed Rebu Rebuke. It, it actually won. It, it, it did quite a good number back then. I'm more likely to cast aggressive mammoth. Blanchwood armor. This would be interesting. Okay. I'm gonna suit up this guy. Let's see if he has a response. Basically, I'm trying to bait counter spells or bounce spells or whatnot. Okay, so he now has to answer that. And I can still cast Galta even after this, so... Wait... I probably should cast Galta first when I... S not with, before attacking. Yeah, well... Water under the bridge. So I'm gonna send both of them in because... Outside of a Settle the Wreckage, he has to block this guy. He might have a Flash creature for blocking that's... Okay too, I guess. Because... If this guy survives, I will still have mana to... Okay, Torrential Gear Hulk. Wait a minute, what's he getting back? Essence Scatter? Okay, he can't cast it immediately. He can chump block. If, well, he can block both, but that's okay for me too. So he's deciding on blocks right now. 
Yeah. Turn. Okay, he's gonna uh, keep the big guy. So I get Vigilant Baylot back. I get to cast out Galta. So he can embalm and take care of one more threat, but that's about it. Oh, he has this allow. So he can embalm this guy. So I will. I would be able to cast an 8 8 at least. Yeah, and there'd be no rush for me to get this guy back. So I wonder what my opponent's doing. He obviously is gonna go embalm. Maybe he would have done in the first main phase. At least it would have given him options to. Well, then again. Okay, he isn't going for it. So I'm gonna cast. No, no, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna attack now. Doesn't matter if he chump blocks. The extra damage isn't gonna do much. So again, he's in a position where. Actually, no. Now that we know he has some um, torrential gear hulks. Actually, it's okay. You know, it's a, you know he has torrential gear hulks. That's okay. If he decides to cast it now, it he's gonna have to. He's gonna waste it again on disallow or whatnot. So he has to block Highland game. So there is a slight benefit to Blanchwood armor, but. Most other matchups can just answer the Highland game. I'm surprised he didn't go for this one. What is he holding mana up for? So, actually, at this point, he has given me no reason to drop aggressive mammoth yet. So, just actually, I sh should probably hold on to the land or elves also. So, we'll end the turn there. Because there's really no reason to drop it now. He has to answer two of my creatures. He can answer one with Angel. Annoying thing is if he draws another Fumigate. Well, yeah, he can Fumigate then just buy back. But if he has a Fumigate, yeah. Pretty much the only reason he's not buying it back is because he's representing Fumigate. His graveyard noticing that he doesn't have instance that he the only instance he has so far are counter spells he kind of wants stuff like bl blink of an eye those would have been really perfect in this deck as for this deck it does the it does the medium to late game pretty well the early game's a bit so 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 he is gonna take out the highland game He's gonna have five mana left over. Yeah, he has. He's gonna. So. Let's cast this one. Combat. Attack with both because he has to block. Well, he has to block this one. So he didn't have any of the expensive stuff yet, so this is probably the one time where the matchup is okay. Again, I'm holding back. No need to cast it when any one of these two guys hitting is enough to win the game. And he still has cards in hand, and he has a ton of mana. Yeah, I can say he was kind of flooded, maybe for three turns, but I was drawing less cards than he was. So I'm going to go into combat. I'm going to attack with the one guy that doesn't get hit by seal away so if he hits for settle that's fine potential gear hulk oh he had another one yeah i should have swung with the entire team then yeah you can't buy back fumigate what you really wanted was settle but well, at least he's not buying back the disallow, so I can now safely cast aggressive mammoth. Unless he has another disallow. 
Okay, okay I really don't know what happened. Possible the writing was on the wall or whatnot, but that was a very close matchup. A uh, few cards either way. It it was anyone's to win. I, it was anyone's to win. So um, it's not a knock against um, Albert's deck. Probably a little more, probably some more proactive spells is what I would recommend. The sit back and do nothing style. Yeah, there were a few decks that did that. It's kind slightly matchup dependent. I wouldn't rely on it completely. So one win, one loss. Okay, this one is. Interesting, in, do I cast Blanchwood Armor on my land war else if I have a chance? The answer is probably not. I will keep this goal because we can hit turn 3 Bristling Boar. I'm actually quite interested in our first opponent's deck. The black is probably for the Poison Tip Archer. That was an addition for Core 2019. It was basically a Reach Death Touch creature for, two mana, uh, for 4 mana. And whenever a creature you control died... Yeah, drain your opponent for one life. So it's actually that was actually very that's actually very decent at those stats. So I wonder where our opponent's deck is. Swamp, fatal push. Yeah, fatal push. So no turn three bristling boar. Uh, probably no. We might not even get any action until then. That is one risk we run into when we keep a hand. On the assumption that our mana dorks don't stick. Ooh. So, again, we're drawing a lot of things that we don't really need. So, but our opponent Mulligan down to five cards, so we might have a fighting shot. Okay, we solved that. So, okay, I'm gonna take the hit. I might, I won't even trade with Bristling Boar. Actually, I could just drop the land or elves. Let's see if we can bait our opponent. We might have something. It really depends. We'll see. So, definitely block first. So, at least we can absorb the damage even if he has a removal spell. Doesn't have the removal spell, so we managed to bait one out. Shall I? It's gonna be painful. At least we did did it then. So we're going to drop Bristling Boar now. No attacks. So we're gonna be taking damage in the air. We're gonna have to compete with Blanchwood Armor. Bit risky. White, black, plenty of removal between th those colors. Okay, we do have options though. Yeah, that's the only target in, I, in, in both counts. So a risk we can do is I can actually suit up the Lanor Elves. No need to be too greedy. This is a vampire deck. Then we just swing with both. Opponent probably has a cast out. Or a cast down. Or none. So we so that's probably one of the few times that Okay. So Knight of Malice. He can trade with this one. So I will just swing with Lanor. Yeah, no need to throw away the bristling boar when I can throw him away later to save some life. the turn there so we kind of lucked out on our opponent's somewhat greedy play we're probably also lucking out that um those two cards are being locked out so I'm gonna just swing with these guys one swing it one at a time I'm probably opening myself up to a threat but our opponent is not in any condition to swing back immediately but here we can see one of the weaknesses where 
we're in the position. Okay, so thank you. Well, it's possible our opponent might have an answer, but. Yeah, he didn't. That that was a very, that was an honest good game. I've always been tempted to say, "Oh, good game," then actually have a trick. I think in hindsight, it's pr that's probably one of the worst things you can do, especially to people you don't know online. If you're doing it among friends, yet yeah, your friends know you're kind of that scummy. Me, I don't know if that makes it more acceptable or not. Oh yeah, I, I, I was going to say that that's one of the cases where you kind of want threats that are flexible. So I already have a few ideas how to uh, how to fix that one. There are some really good cards from Dominaria that will fit into this deck. And it will fit the rotation safe condition as well. So we've been recording... Actually not for, not for very long. So we might this might actually just be a one hour video, especially if I lose back to back. Please don't. So, this is definitely not keepable. No action whatsoever. This one is much more keepable. Two lands who, even if Lanoir Elves die, we can play Greenwood Sentinel. So, we're definitely keeping this one. I will keep the third land because, as we saw in the last game, no guarantee Lanoir Elves is going to survive. There's this thing called Fatal Push. Until, until it rotates out, at least. Uh, okay, so this is okay. This is I've seen a, recently seen a flavor of um, red deck where it's where it's hinged around artifacts. It's actually quite good, at least for the next three months until everything rotates out. Okay, no, this might be more traditional. Okay. He's banking on the fact that I am not going to throw away my Lanoir Elves. No, I still have plays. Now, I might not throw away my Scrap Heap Scrounger because he can easily buy it back now that I just killed Bomat Courier. And Center Coursers, they are man efficient, but so is Lightning Strike. So I'm gonna just take the damage. At least I can drop these runner run. Okay, Goblin Chain Runner. So that might actually incentivize me to throw away Scrap Heap Scrounger now. Okay, that doesn't. Actually, that incentivizes me because the Greenwood Sentinel has already slightly outlived its usefulness. Okay, Plummet is not gonna work unless our opponent somehow has a Rekindling Phoenix. Now, if there's any illustration of where out rare outclass is common, this is it. But green still generally has the better creatures. Okay. So I knew you needed my help. We're currently on track to lose this game because this plummet really should be a sideboard card. Then again, this these decks are made for quick constructed, so I can't complain too much. Rabbit bite would be nice. Nope, but that's I can't complain about another center of course, or we're just gonna keep playing these guys all day. But we will still be taking damage here. He did use up his energy, so he won't be buying back Scrap Heap Scrounger anytime soon. Ugh. Well, actually no, I will take the damage. Because I Okay, so I can't. So the plummet is actually decent. No blocks. I'll find another way to deal with this guy, but I need to deal with Chandra first. I guess I can. Yeah. It's sad that I'm going to throw away one centaur courser. Actually, I don't have to throw him away just yet. 
So we did hold our own for a bit, but now we are definitely out of cards. Imagine if that Bowman Courier was still running. <sighs> okay. But let this, not, but don't let this discourage you if you run against a deck that is pretty much all mythics and rares and whatnot. Be easy. The fact that you can hold your own for quite a while still means something. Five more opponents playing on piano. Yep, this is definitely a tuned deck. So we're. In, I, w I was surprised he probably didn't draw Heart of Kieran. No reason not to attack. So we're gonna go down to four. I'll be swinging everyone against Chandra. Probably good. Yeah, I'm gonna because I need both. Yeah, see. Some just because it's a turn, we're we're way past turn six. No guarantee that you'll be able to cast this one. So this illustrates how sometimes these auras are quite bad. So. So this is definitely a lost game on our part, so I'm going to swing with both. Yes, I know I'm opening myself up. Okay. I should just tap uh, my just tapped on my mana just to really show I'm really out. Oh well. So we we knew this coming in that we we're, we're definitely gonna lose this one, but well, we didn't lose too bad. We we did eliminate some of our opponent's threats. So we still got one more. We still have um put one more game to lose at least. Hopefully it's not this one. I could I could like use um to charge ahead a little bit more. So de yep, definitely keepable. Though we are full accelerants and we don't have any mid game action, so we're hoping that Lanoir Elves Druid of the Cow survive for our aggressive mammoth. I'm gonna keep this one though. Plummet main deck, kinda hit or miss. There is a card that I would rather run. I think it's in. Yeah, I think it's in Ixalan. That would be a much better fit because if it doesn't hit. Okay, Fatal Push again. If it doesn't hit fl flying creatures, it can hit enchantments, so there is that likelihood. I'm gonna play Greenwood Sentinels. Let's get some aggression on the board. We can cast Druid of the Cowl next turn since we're nowhere near. Or not. This is. Let's, let's just go full aggro. So our opponent was able to fatal push but hasn't done anything yet. I assuming this is a control. Mono black control of sorts. So okay. So maybe that would have been the one time I wish. No, I didn't draw land anyway. So maybe not. So let's just swing with everybody. Yeah, there should be removal by now. Even if it's like fungal infection. Oh, murder. Okay. That's actually okay. I'd rather see the murder now than the mur than the murder much later when I do cast Vigilant Baylot. So opponent's gonna take one of our cards, but he won't be able to cast it immediately. Yeah, we're gonna... Interestingly enough, I can answer Gaunti just by swinging it, sacrificing the Greenwood and casting Rabbit Bite. Since I got nothing better to do, let's do just that. Yeah, but that kind of play is really screaming. I have a combat trick, so... So he took the safe bet. He had plenty of life. Now we're gonna find out what exactly did our opponent remove. Huh? You gonna tell us? Tell us? No? Okay, not. So really could use 
two more ma mana. At least one here, one here. Opponents might be stuck on mana also, but... I Okay, he's holding back. He's gonna cast something though. Yahini... Yeah, pressure. Okay, so... Let's see. Sacrifice gains indestructible until end of turn. I can take out Gaunti just to make sure he never casts the one, but he just ends up sacrificing it to Yahini. I'm gonna target Yahini first. Then I'm going to go into combat, swing with the Greenwood Sentinel. He might be incentivized to block this time. And now we're gonna cast. We're gonna cast that again. So that is probably the worst use of Rabbit Bite, but at least we got rid of. But we were able to get rid of two rare creatures that way. Opponent's still kind of stranded. We're still kind of stranded. This guy's probably gonna eat. Actually, Druid of the Call could have eaten the Fatal Push anytime. So just attack. Just. Opponent is holding back something. Pirate Blade. Hmm, so this is... Yeah, pro probably should not have walked into that. I knew I needed the mana. That was definitely a mistake. Third Rabbit Bite. No. Okay, opponent's now at 6 mana. Okay, gonna take, take that hit. If there's one thing interesting, based on my experience in the deck, I was gonna say the rare that comes with it adds flying so plummet would hit. That's not it. So well at least he only gains a measly one. But yeah, we're not gonna win this one. Let's yeah, let's play it out a little bit. That's the problem with this kind of that's the problem with this kind of deck. Okay, fourth mana, way too late. Yeah, I'm gonna just I'm I'm just gonna good game now. And give him the concession. So so we see So basically we need to solve the We need to solve the Jack of All Trades problem in this deck. But that's not not too hard. We can we can sort things out a bit. Let's see what consolation prizes we got. No? I like this one, but it's a shame it's gonna go. So here's our consolation prize. So give me a sec. I'm gonna set us up for um, match. We're gonna, gonna set up deck stats so that we can take a look ho how the deck is. Then we're gonna pr then we're going to proceed to proceed to things shortly. So yeah, please stand by for a second and. Okay, so we're we're now looking at the forest smite deck. So we're gonna so we're just gonna give it a quick analysis. As you can see, very cheap. We'll definitely keep some of the, these guys, but we're gonna try to take this in two directions. So. It might actually be possible to make this uh, rotation safe deck. We'll start with the um, we'll start with the direction that this w that this one seemed to be aiming more for, which is some um, ramp into big guy stuff. So let's start by cutting out the stuff that doesn't exactly help the ones that open us up to two for one. So Blanchwood armor is gonna go. Centaur courser. There are be there's a better option. So this guy's gonna go. We'll leave the Druid of the Cowl. Actually, let's see. Let's search for Elf. At, at last time I checked, everyone that produced mana was an Elf. So, nope. Druid of the Cowl is a the Revolt, so that's gonna go. We can sub it with Elfheim Druid. It's a bit softer, but it does give us an option to run Kicker Spells. Actually, that's what we're gonna do with this one. So, that's gonna go. We'll put maybe one or two of these guys in for now. 
Let's leave the, let's leave these big guys here. Greenwood Sentinel's gonna go. Highland Games gonna go. Thanwar Elves is gonna go into four. Meteor is gonna go. We'll put the plummet in the sideboard for now, but that's probably gonna go. Prodigious growth, definitely gone. Titanic growth. We'll leave it there for now. Verdant Rebirth's gonna go. Vigilant Baylot, we got better options. So once we strip that down a bit, let's we'll go. Let's go look for stuff like we're gonna add four copies of Adventurous Impulse because as you've seen in some of the games, we were hoping to draw into something. Being able to dig in a few cards deeper helps. We may not set it up immediately, but it will set up next turn. So we got that going. Aggressive mammoth. I guess we could leave this one here. So what we're looking for are ways to protect our creatures. So before that, we're going to go into we're gonna go check some of the guys with kicker. Because one of the issues we have is we have things that we can do early but are only good if they're early. We have things that we can do late but only good if they're late. So let's take a look at some of them. So we got three copies of Bristling Boar which we can upgrade to Baylot Gorger. We've got Cross and Druid which is a way to help us regain some life especially in some matchups. So I would put that in the sideboard. So this is basically Monogreen Kicker. Untamed Kavu is what I would much rather have over the over over the Sentinel because does the same thing has vigilance also has trample and can and and works and can be pumped up into a five mana five five so that actually also um, obsoletes uh, obsoletes the vigilant Baylot. Okay, let's see. It's just a guy that was uh, okay. So there's a okay. So um, sometimes work calls you. Not not always the greatest thing, but in my line of work, you do have to pay attention. Oh, by the way, for those if, if anyone wondering, I am an architect. So let's add some copies of Territorial Allosaurus because this one is rotation safe. There are other dinosaurs that are safe, like Ribjaw Raptor is a good one. Gigantosaurus is a common. I'm pretty sure this guy was a rare. Yeah, it's a rare. It's, this one, this one kind of glitched out. Or it, oh, it doesn't show you until you look here. Okay, my bad. So we got a few other options. Grand the Lonely King, somewhat kind of interesting. It's it's an easier to get. It's easy to get. So if you, so you could just put one of these him in, for example. You can probably. So you have, so you can probably drop the bit bristling boars now. But we need to take a look at our curve. Also, we need to look at our removal spells. Currently, it's rabbit bite. Nature's way is gonna rotate out, so I'm not gonna put that one in. Forest never rotates out, so that's not a problem. Sapling migration is kind of a way to. We can use this on the go wide strategy. We'll save this one for later. Could put the Baylot Gorger in. Let's see what other big green creatures are there. Um, you know what? Thankfully, it's only two sets that. I'll, I'm gonna look at Dominaria and Core 2019 first. Actually, no, let's just look at Core 2019 now. Because I, I know a few cards I would want to put in my sideboard. Like Colossal Dreadmaw. Yeah, this one's a good filler also. Daggerback Basilisk. It's a decent removal. Actually works very great with Rabbit Bite. I would put... I guess you, it is safe to put about one or two copies of him in. Let's just put three. And put the fourth in the sideboard. We do have Druid of the Cowl in tw Core 2019. I'm going to leave the Elfheim Druid here for now. But if you don't have Elfheim, feel free to use Druid of the Cowl. Nothing, nothing terribly wrong. We don't have that many kicker spells. Elvish Rejuvenator. It does ramp us more per more permanently, so I get, I, I will con leave this here for consideration. So let's see. Gaspark Twins is... Okay, it's a top end if you don't have anything else. Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma. 
Def this one's definitely a good fit. Maybe not so much with our... It, it fits well with Galta. It fits well with Grun. Doesn't fit well with Gigantosaurus. So we... It does fit well, nicely with aggressive mammoth, so we do have options, and and it also provides the needed trample. It also goes great with territorial allosaurus, not with untamed Kavu, but we can't win them all. So no sentinel, hungering hydra, kind of a mana sink. Okay, if you can get them, Palaka worm is a good is a good top end. Sadly, it's a rare here. It used to be an uncommon back in the day. Can you believe it? 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. Gain 7 life, draw a card. Uncommon. Ah, those were the days of the Eldrazi. So, let's see. I would much rather... I will put some Reclamation Sages here. I would much rather have the Trashing Brontodon because it is beefier, but you can't complain too much about it. At least this one takes... This one stays even after the enchantment goes. So there is still some use for that. So I'm going to leave a few copies here on the side for now. Collect. Okay, these guys are not so great. Runic Armasaur. Weird Rare. There are a few abilities that um, this guy will trigger off that, are, that happen, but not too much to rely on. Torn Lieutenant, this one we'll be looking into if we when we go into the go wide strategy for green or sign champion hmm, sounds interesting plus five plus no plus six mana becomes a five five bear okay maybe not so great vine mare is all one thing we will do on the other deck because that's the one where you want to play pump spells you want to play a few of your enchantments vine mare is basically the perfect one to put it on Do I want a copy of Vivian Reed? Well, actually, just for the lulls, we'll put one, one of her in. She's definitely not what I would call mandatory. Let's see what else we let's see what else we could do here. So let's put in two more cards here to fill out the curve a bit. But let's also take a look at Dominaria. Yeah, there, some of the cards I wanted to fill out. Okay, Ancient Animus, Baylot Gorger, Arbor Armament, no, no. Fungal Plots is a way to reuse some of our dead creatures. It buys us time. I wouldn't mind putting a co copy of two or two on the sideboard. Kamal's Druidic, that was not going to do it. Mammoth Spider is okay as a way to get rid of Flyers also. Gift of Growth can be our... Can be our Titanic growth replacement. Actually, no, it can't. Oh wait, it can because it has to untap target creature, so it can act as a sort of combat trick. So it, because because with Titanic growth, I was basically, um, like if you remember that last attack when I attacked with both, I was telegraphing a trick. They were probably thinking of this one in mind. Actually, um. So they let it through, and I, and and he was able, and he would be able to crack back and whatnot. So I guess we can just replace it with gift of growth instead. It's a shame there's nothing here that gives hex proof. There are plenty of cards that did this back in the day. Marwin the nurture. We'll put her in on the other version. Multani is something great to put in if you if you can if you can get your hands on him. Go ahead. Pierce the sky is a no. Primordial worms a no. Song of Rayleigh is another way to get some get some acceleration. This one we might actually put in the in the go wide deck. Spore Swarms, okay, Spore Contalid. Steel Leaf Champion. Actually this guy's perfect here. If you can get your if you can get your hands on one or two copies, two copies would be great. Basically, this allows you to put some early pressure. Gets you put some early pressure. Again, note that um, Gore Claw is not. Um, Gore Claw doesn't um, give a lot, reduction to a lot of our creatures, but he does give um, the tr the plus one plus one and trample bonus to a lot of our creatures. So that is something to consider. So this one's gonna be for a while. We'll take a look at 
Rivals. Actually, I know what I'm getting. It's just crash um canopy. I'm just gonna take a look. See if there are any other options I might have missed. Crested herd collar is is an okay fi filler too. Base five five for two tree trees. Maybe not so much. So if you remembered my um, video on the Golgari exploration deck, if you have any copies of Jade Light Ranger, they would be okay. They, they are another way to filter true cards. Okay, Trashing Brontodon. I would much rather main deck Trashing Brontodon put a few instead of the Dagger Back Basilisk. Sure, there is the tr interaction with Rabbit Bite, but it's not so. It's not not too great. We could use a little more added removal here. So let's look through it. Wayward Sword Toot. Mm, no. Tender Shoot Dread's definitely gonna go in the other deck. Okay, so that's it for rivals. Let's look at the excellent proper. Okay, this is this is the sideboard card I was talking about. Def not plummet. So I'm gonna t I'm gonna drop the I'm gonna put the crushing canopies, remove the plummets. We still have reclamation sages here in case our opponents playing uh enchantment heavy deck. There were a few white blue decks that um play around with psychic corrosion and just stall the board. Quite good stuff actually. Growing rights of Itlemok. You need to have multiple creatures, so this goes in the other deck. Pounce is another kind of removal spell we can have. It also costs 2 mana. Your creatures are at risk, but... But at least this is instant speed. This is another option, uh, option we can use. If you have copies of Ripjaw Raptor, definitely put put him in 4 mana for 4 or 5 is just as good so I'm going to I'm just going to fill I'm going to fill out the deck with some pounds okay there's no interesting one bird one drop I can think of Probably just another Allosaurus. So basically, if if the matchup is quite aggressive, we can just we can take out some of the very expensive ones and just drop in the cheaper ones. That's one way to do it. So this is the Forest Might version 2.0. Uh, version this is version 2.0 ramp. So this is the ramp version of the deck. Let's an give this a an quick analysis. So this one works on the everything's cheap into everything expensive strategy. Oh yeah, let's fix the mana base first. Since we have, since now we have more um, mana accelerators. Actually, you can mix your Elfheim Druid and Elvis Rejuvenator. I still kept those, so we can actually drop down to twenty-four lands. So let's drop down to twenty-four. I will add the two Arch of Raskas and some memorials to Unity. So let's add Arch. Now, mem Arch of Raskas will mess with your play with Gigantosaurus, so keep that in mind. So, okay, so 24, 22. Let's go down to 20. How many lands is that? 20, 22, 23, 24. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, this card's not supposed to be there. Okay, so we do have space for one more. Now, if we take a look at our curve, we have a high two slot. We could use another one or another tree, but we've already filled out the ones with the ones we want. That's too many ones in the sentence. We could use a spell effect that would. We could use a spell because everything we have are creatures. Hmm. Growth. 
trying to think of what is a good spell that can complement. Oh wait, there's an enchantment that allows you to draw. F okay, so let's say power four or greater. Let's kill the. F oh wait, let's just say power four. Okay, so. I know it's a green card, so there's that. Colossal Majesty. Yeah. Yeah, let's put one of it in. We do have a decent number of creatures that are pow Well, general actually, a lot of creatures are power 3 or greater. So, this might not actually work well. Actually, no, it doesn't work well. Just put. I guess just put in another Steel Leaf Champion. Let's see, because we have rabbit bites all the We could just add another rabbit bite, that's another option. So I'm just gonna put in the other steel leaf champion. We do have options like another gift of growth or another rabbit bite. It's basically some sort of removal. Some we do have extra removal here to supplement in case we need to deal with our opponent's creatures. Take no territorial allosaurus also has a removal, although it's quite expensive. So that's pretty so that is the deck we would go for. There's a notification here. I wonder what that means. So we'll save this one as a new deck. Then I'm going to load up the then I'm going to load up the old deck again and we're gonna go in the other direction. So please stand by. I'm also gonna take a look at this notification here. What the heck is this? Oh. Somebody liked the somebody liked the deck I made. I wonder if I ran into him, ran into him in gameplay. So let's recover the deck list. Mm, nope, that's not it. So we can delete that. Let's paste. See if I still have that. Nope. Okay, that was weird. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get that again. Not quite a pause. I you can still hear me talking, but you don't. I guess you don't exactly have to see everything I'm doing behind the scenes. Okay, so I've rebuilt the... So I've rebuilt the deck, right? Um, the, the original deck again. This time we're going to go in the opposite direction. So a lot of these big creatures are going to go. So maybe we'll leave the... We might leave one or two big creatures. Definitely leaving Galta. We didn't take out the Gigantosaurus. Take out the Meteor Golem. Plummets again. Those are really sideboard cards. Prodigious Growth definitely going to go. Titanic Gro Verdant Rebirth is going to go. Vigilant Baylot is kind of okay, I guess. Okay, so we're going to so we're going to fix a few things first. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're gonna start by looking at all our small creatures on the go wide. We're gonna see tribal elf. Does this work? And wait a minute. Why am I seeing our? Let's change standard format. Standard format. Okay. So I'm gonna. S I think there's enough room for me to make this rotation safe. So a lot of cards are not gonna make it. So no architect of the untamed. No cultivator of blades. Elfheim Druid will still get in, so two copies of that. I'll drop the Druid of the Cow for now, though we might need it. Elvish Rejuvenator. Actually, I'm just going to bump these guys up a bit. Again, m more full set Lanoir Elves. There's really no reason not to play play that guy. Elvish Clan Caller. Definitely a rare I want here. We do want at least about two or three copies. This is going to be more expensive, but you, this is Magic Arena, so... If you have your time to get get around to it, gear poor guide. Mm. This was reprinted. Kind of iffy though. Mm. Non worse. Well, this is a deck where this is a deck where Marwin would shine, so I will put her in. Let's drop the Greenwood Sentinels, drop the Highland game. 
I'm going to see if I can avoid playing... Okay, Reclamation Sage gets in. Again, this deck is much better if you can play black for Poison Tip Archer at least. In fact, just playing Poison Tip Archer, you can drop the Elf team altogether. Just go straight for... Um, use the Sapperling team from Dominaria. That one would work really well here. So, Sage, Sky, Team, Servant, Convent, No, Sky, Weaver, Silk Weaver, Elite, No. Silk Leaf Champion is a good top end to run into. Torn Lieutenant. Again, another rare, but at least. But it is the right kind of rare. Okay, Wild Wanderers for me. So. So definitely the bristling boars are gonna go. Center coursers are gonna go. So we're keeping the Galta, keeping the aggressive mammoth because we do need something to play into. Elves are well known for spending all their mana. Do note that they do have a good. Do they? They do have ways to spend mana. Like torn lieutenant, you can spend mana to pump. Elvish clan caller, you can spend mana to search. So even without these top ends, we do have something to do. Vigilant Baylot. Probably need something better than the five, five mana cost. And let's search at green. <laughs> Collected Company is a very good addition to this deck. Except that's in modern. I wonder why the heck did I even think of that. Arbor back Stomper is a very good fit. Very good fit. It's just Ada Revolt. Ronas is a very good fit. Also, if you're not worried about rotation, Bitterbow Sharpshooters is fair enough. Carnage Tyrant is also a good, is a good top end too. Actually, one of the concerns is you reach this, you reach this high. You don't then you then you have to worry about your opponent's counter spells. In fact, Carnage Tyrant is also a good fit on the other deck. I w I'm going to update that deck to fit a, a Carnage Tyrant or two if I can. It is a Mythic, so probably will replace Gigantosaur if ever. Actually, let's. I'm going to remove the Carnage Tyrant for now. But definitely, if you can get Carnage Tyrant, put him in. No reason not to. So yeah, crushing canopy is gonna replace our plummets. Creeping mold. Mm, it's a shame it doesn't hit planes. Well, it did. It did predate planeswalker, so it was never gonna hit them anyway. Okay, let's see what else. We're gonna need some creatures that can act as removal. So this would be the best deck to put dagger back basilisk. Exemplar of Strength, Feral Prowler, Forerunner, Heller, it's no, 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 no. Fungal Plots also works here, but that is more of a sideboard card. So I dropped that. Well, just for argument's sake, it is a rare already in here. No re. The fewer cards you can swap out, the better. Now that I think of it, growing rights might be a bit too, might be a bit overkill for this deck. You, are, it is about generating mana, but it might be a bit too much. Gran is a decent sideboard. Decent mainboard or sideboard card. I'm going to just put him in the sideboard. At least this, at least the way this deck is built, you can shift, you can shift around. Also, but one thing to note is, we only have one payoff for playing all elves. That's just elvish clan caller. So maybe it's not the best idea after all. We still keeping the Blanchwood armors. There's gotta be a better enchantment I I can use. Actually, maybe the answer is not enchantment but equipment. 
Let's remove that for now. Bring Hydra Hunt the Weak. So we do have options here. No, not so quite yet. Not quite. Well, actually, we do have one card that we probably should put in. Okay, let's put the memorial to unity for now because I know I'm going to remove this. In fact, let's just drop this down to 20 lands. Just remind me to put Arch of Araskas in. If you. If you're one of the older players and you got copies of Nissa, definitely put um, put her in until rotation hits. No, no reason not to. The this one's just um for deck building purposes. Looking forward into the future. No reason to hinder yourself in gameplay. Again, more removal can't hurt. And actually, this works better. This actually works better if now that we have th these guys in. Okay, so these are okay. So hmm, Sandworm Convergence is. Amon Ket. That's not. We're not gonna, not gonna put that in here. But it is. It is a decent top end to work into for either deck. So, going through this. Oh yeah, the one I missed was Gift of Growth. That's the one that should be in here. So, let's see. I might do the other flavor. Ending of Dominaria. This one is a decent rare one. Oh yeah, Song of Freilis. It's what you might not not need the mana, but it is one way to pump your pump your creatures through. Okay, so that's so this is a better this is one better way to pump everyone. It just assumes that you have everyone. You know what? I think I'm gonna drop the Vigilant Bay lot. In favor of if you have rare creatures that fit this slot go ahead I'm just putting snapping sail backs here because one it's uncommon two you can surprise people with this it's a deep it's a decent enough trick the Sylvan awakening is also another trick you can another trick you can do in the go wide strategy let's put one copy here just for just for argument's sake. Then we'll probably just fill this out with um, Territorial Allosauruses, maybe. There are, there are other possibilities here, definitely. Mm, let's not put the trash. We can put the trashing Bronto then. Basically, you're free to mix the, these decks up however you want. And I'm surprised there's no... Okay, so Vivian Reed, we'll get in there. Probably drop the Life Crafter. But Life Crafter's Bestiary is a very good way to get card draw. It's yet another rare, so I might actually. S so, what, so what you can do is some um, consider this or Vivian Reed in, in that slot. Your choice. Probably Vivian Reed might be better because you you want your elves to work toward a certain top end. That's why, and a lot of our elves um cost two, three, and whatnot. Okay, let's not forget Archer for Aska. Right now, Archer for Aska seems to be like a land that, if you're playing monocolor, no reason not to fit in in in. If you're playing two colors, the reason to not fit it in is if everything's in one, two, three, just like the, just like the black red pirate deck. The what's ready for. This is really bad. I already forgot what it's called. 
the brazen coalition there so let's let's take a look at this let's analyze this one for, um, for theory crafting as you can see definitely very high here there is no grad it's it's not quite graduated card draw would be would be something to work towards to def the deck is definitely soft towards um in single shot removal and whatnot so there are so this one is again another theoretical this card this deck is actually even more expensive than the other one so with un until I see any cards from how do you say this until I see cards from the upcoming guilds of Ravnica set they probably will have elves I probably won't recommend this quite yet oh yeah it's something it's gift of growth yeah we want this one more also the untap ability is quite useful here especially if you're like generating mana let's say you have Marwen she has a decent amount of power you spend two mana gift of growth and tap her for mana, gift of growth, untap her for untap her, tap her again, you have even more mana. Poss quite possible. So actually we didn't have that many kicker spells, so Elfheim Druid. Druid of the Cowl might be better here. Yeah, let's let's return Druid of the Cowl again. At least I know he's in core twenty nineteen. Yep, latest set is core 2019, so definitely that's a better fit here. I might actually drop one druid for um for another rabbit bite, I suppose. That's just me thinking it out. So that so that would be my version of the that would be my version if I went more into the elf plan. Again, more expensive, and I actually am not happy with this one because it looks quite soft, especially with the re current removal right now. So, there is another direction that I did not explore, which is the. Which is if I used. Mm, what is this? If I use Saprolinks, because there are plenty in Dominaria, plenty of them are in Mono Green. Basically, what you do is you get. All the mono green green sapro fung fungi that produce sapro links, you get fungal plots. Add a bunch of creatures that are soft like land or elves and whatnot. Then you s round it out with um, tender shoot dryads. Problem is, tender shoot dryads are basically targets on s are walking targets, so quite pl plausible, but not too. But but not too great. So. So this is gonna be my. So this is my version. Save this deck here. So didn't save the title. So that's it for this episode of the Magic Arena run. I'll finish this later. If so, if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, don't don't forget to notify. If you have any suggestions, any ideas that you want me to explore, please let me know. N this um next episode, I'm going to. Let's see which decks I I haven't explored the blue black deck. I have re revisited the blue black deck. I haven't revisited the green white deck. And there's one more deck I have not revisited yet. I'm probably gonna revisit the green white. The green white ones gonna get a lot of stuff from Core 2019. There are a lot of new cats that were printed. I'll see which one of the two I have more stuff for. Probably the blue black deck's gonna be revisited earlier so i'm good so that's that's kind of